Hello, are we live? <laughs> Sorry, just like at the last second, my little earbuds that I used to hear what in the world I'm saying flung out of my ears and yeah, let's get that fixed. Okay, you know, this is what's going to happen on your very first live stream and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a little nervous, uh, but hey, welcome. Welcome to my very first live stream. Um, I'm not muted, am I? Right, okay hoping I could hear myself. Um, anyway, welcome to my first live stream. Uh, I'm so glad that you came to join me. Today, I just kind of wanted to talk about general travel questions that you're having. Um, if I get some people in the chat, I will definitely try to um, you know, answer those questions. I did give myself a little bit of an outline of things to talk about, um, just so that I'll have something to talk about if I'm in this chat room and in this live stream by myself. Uh, but yeah, uh, welcome and welcome if you're watching this on the replay because I am putting this up. That way you can watch it later if you weren't able to be here for the live stream at 10 a.m. today. So uh, first thing I wanted to do was just kind of tell you about me, uh, especially if you're new to my channel. I know I've gotten a lot of new people lately. Um, I just hit the 1700 follower mark, so I'm very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I just kind of wanted to tell you about me. My name is Stacy. I am a registered nurse and I live in Texas. Uh, always have, always lived here, but I've always kind of had that passion and drive to get out and see other places and meet other people that weren't like me. Um, I always wanted to kind of immerse myself in, in other, cu other cultures. Um, and so that's kind of what sparked my travel bug. I, I grew up in a really, really teeny town and I just, I saw all these big cities and, um, you know, places like the Grand Canyon and textbooks. And I was like, but you know, will I ever get to go there? And so now that I'm a little bit older, I'm like, you know what, that's going to be my priority. Travel is going to be my priority. I'm checking it off. Um, so yeah, one place at a time, <laughs> one place at a time. So Currently, if you've been watching my videos, we just got back from uh, like an Arizona, Utah trip. We went to the Grand Canyon. Uh, we went and saw Horseshoe Bend, Antelope Canyon, Monument Valley. We went to Moab and we rented side by sides. That was something <laughs> that was kind of scary, um, but a lot of fun. And so that's kind of what I wanted to focus on talking about today. But like I said, I can see, let me pull my chat window back up. I'll post something in the chat. That way you can kind of see it. Let's see. Hey, y'all. Leave your questions here. Let's see if you can see that. And if you are here on the live chat, um, if you're able to, go ahead and leave me a comment. That way I can see you and I can see that you're here. Because like I said, I can't write. <laughs> I can't type. It just says all. Leave your questions here. Um, anyway. So yeah, leave your comments in the chat. That way I can kind of see if all of this is working because I'm just kind of shooting from the hip and winging this at the moment. Um, anyways, I've got my tea here. I was drinking coffee, but my anxiety, <laughs> I told you I was anxious. Um, the coffee was giving me a little bit more anxiety than I wanted. And I tend to ramble if I've got a lot of anxiety. So I don't know if you're the same way if you are leave a comment in the chat and help me feel better about it. Um, but yeah, so I kind of wanted to talk about getting to the Grand Canyon, starting this road trip, if it's maybe a road trip that you want to replicate. Um, and I really would recommend that you see 
at least the upper part of Arizona and Utah, lower part of Utah, it really, in my opinion, is best seen as a road trip. Um, sure, you can fly to and from these places. They're going to be very small airports. Um, but the, the landscape is unlike anything I've ever seen before, um, especially when you kind of get into that northern Arizona portion. Um, you know, Monument Valley was so crazy beautiful. Uh, and it's just kind of surreal going to these places that you've seen so many times, or maybe you've seen it in a movie because that like Monument Valley, I know they filmed a lot of movies there, including um, what one of the Back to the Futures, the one where they were in the Wild West is that the third one, Back to the Future 3, um, and Fantastic Beasts. I'm a Harry Potter fan. If you didn't know that, that's another thing about me. Love Harry Potter. Uh, I didn't get into it until I was about 25, 26 years old because I was, when Harry Potter came out, I mean, I was in high school. I was going to college. Like, I was just a little bit too old for it, I think. But anyways, my friends have gotten me into it. And now I'm, my parents know and my family knows, my husband knows I'm addicted. Um, but that's another live stream for another time. So um, I don't see, oh, hi, Michelle. Hi, I see you. <laughs> I got my first comment. There is Michelle and Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Hey, Ralph and Tina, I have a thought and tell me if you're interested or not. And it's cool if you're not. But Ralph and Tina sent me the loveliest care package from Germany um, that is still, I can see it right there. I need to open it. And I told them, I said, you know, Jeff had a great idea. I could open that and do like an unboxing. I'm going to guess there's like German things in it. <laughs> you know, maybe, I don't know, food products. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what's in it. But anyways, I thought, hey, I'll make a video about it. Won't that be cool? But it would also be kind of cool if I had somebody's opinion uh, from where these products are from. So I kind of thought we could either do a live stream or if you're more comfortable, we could, I could pre-record it. And maybe you can put some stuff in there, like some blips of video and kind of tell me about these products, why you chose them and why they're in there. I don't know. Anyways, uh, can you tell I'm rambling? But um, yeah. Hi, Michelle. My mom's in here. Debbie's my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to focus on our conversation about. Of course, if you have other travel questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And as I see them, um, I'll try to get those answered as well. I may even, if they're not about kind of this road trip I'm going to talk about, I may save them for the end. We'll see. Um, so yeah, the first thing I kind of want to talk about, let me get my clock up here so I can see where we're at. Perfect. Um, getting to the grand Canyon. Um, you're going to see in the video that I just posted on Friday and the video, I've got a, like a general Grand Canyon travel tips video that I'm editing now. It's going to come up this Friday. You're going to see that, of course, the Grand Canyon is a little bit isolated. I would imagine as it should be. Um, it is probably the nearest town for the, for the South Rim would be Tucson and that's where we stayed. Um, so I would say no matter where you're coming from, if it's not in the kind of Arizona, uh, Arizona, Utah, Las Vegas area, I would imagine you're probably going to fly in to one of these airports. Um, now, we live around Dallas, so we flew into the Flagstaff Airport. Um, we thought about flying into Phoenix, but either way, we knew we were going to be renting a car. And for roughly the same price for the tickets that I found, um, it, it was just easier for us to go ahead and fly into Flagstaff and cut down a little bit of that drive time that we were going to have getting out to Tucson. Um, because I know Phoenix it was another like hour or, or maybe hour and a half, two hours from Flagstaff. Um, so if we'd have flown into Phoenix, it, we just would have had a longer drive to get up north to the south rim of the Grand Canyon versus flying into Flagstaff. It was a much smaller airport. Uh, I think you will have seen that in this last video. It, it's, it kind of reminds me of one of our regional airports we have here. I mean, it's just one building. It's one conveyor belt for all luggage. Uh, I didn't even see that they had really more than one uh, terminal, if you will. It's just one building. Um, but yeah, so we flew into Flagstaff and then from there we had a an hour and a half, we'll just say two hour drive from there to Tucson. Tucson. It's 
pretty well just like a straight shot. I think you get on, it might be 60, 66, not the Highway 66 or Interstate 66 or whatever that you're uh, used to seeing, you know, on the, the all the road trip videos. It's a different one. But anyways, um, yeah, goes up to the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> so from there, I would say if you weren't going to fly into either Phoenix or Flagstaff, Another place that I see people going to the Grand Canyon from, from a kind of a bigger city would be Las Vegas. Um, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit, but Las Vegas is about 250 miles from the Grand Canyon. It's going to be on the Western side though. Uh, you're still going to be able to either go to the North or the South Rim just based on its location where it's at. Um, but for us, we went, kind of more on the easterly side of the South Rim. That's where your national park entrance is. Let me get a drink because my mouth is dry. I put this on my Instagram stories. I have been loving this cup. I thought the other day that it was leaking and it was going to be really kind of sad because I just got it, but it wasn't leaking. I must have spilled water, which really makes sense here. Okay, perfect. So yeah, we rented a car and we drove. Um, that would really be my suggestion for you. And again, like I said, the just getting to see this part of America from the ground, it's just so beautiful. And the terrain changes. Sometimes it changes every 30 minutes and you're looking at something different. So that's always fun to just go around the next bend and see something magnificent. Um, you're going up and down mountains and going over these mountain passes. And so that's another thing that kind of gives you a little bit of a bit of a thrill, um, but just gives you some pretty views because you're so high up. Uh, again, like I said, very small regional airports right there at the Grand Canyon in Tucson. They have the Grand Canyon uh, Airport, but it's pretty small. Um, I would even say smaller than the Flagstaff Airport that we flew into. I would think it would be very small planes, maybe even private planes that would be flying in and out of that airport. Um, so I just, I don't bring it up as often that airport as an option because I don't think it's going to be a feasible option for your average traveler. I think that's probably going to have a higher price ticket, probably less flexibility and less availability for flight times in and out. Um, and like I said, it, it may lend you to having to almost rent a private plane to get in and out there. If you have actually flown in and out of the Grand Canyon airport, let me know because I don't know anybody personally who has, and I wasn't really able to find a lot of, um, actually I wasn't able to find any stories, blog posts, videos about somebody who had. So if you have, throw me some comments down in the comment. I'd, I'd like to have that conversation and discussion and maybe add that information to my blog post. Um, cause the only thing I have is what I can find online. Let's see. Next note that I have, um, be aware for the North and South rims. They have different seasons. So the South rim, as far as I know, is open year round. Uh, the North Rim is closed for the winter and their winter is a little bit longer than I live in Texas than the winter that we have. Our winter ends here usually by the end of March, unless we've got one last cold snap or something in April. But um, the North Rim is closed pretty well through April. Um, and then I think it opens back up around May, like mid-May. It just opened up now and we're at May 15th. I think it just opened up this last week, I saw. Um and then it's going to stay open all summer and then it will close back down around mid-October, end of October-ish. So keep that in mind. If you're planning to go to the Grand Canyon, you're not going to be able to visit the North Rim or you're not going to be able to get into like the campsites, the national park area, stuff like that during that winter season because it is closed. This is a big thing to keep in mind if uh, you're going from Las Vegas because one of the main routes that I saw to go visit the Grand Canyon from Las Vegas, the main interstate takes you up to the North Rim. And if you're visiting Las Vegas in a winter month, which, like I said, is going to be from probably mid to end of October through April, 
uh, you're you're going to end up getting up to the north room and probably not going to be able to see anything. So keep that in mind if those one of the months that you're going to be visiting Las Vegas and you want to take this trip out to see the Grand Canyon while you're there, you may need to alter your course to go down to the south rim and be able to, to see that. Um, speaking of, around that same area, if you're coming in from Las Vegas on the south rim, is that really neat uh, kind of glass overlook I really wanted to see that on this trip, but it was just too far out of the way. It, it probably would have added an, an, an entire extra day to our drive to get out there to that west side. But if you're coming in from Las Vegas, highly recommend taking the trip out to the south portion of the Grand Canyon and looking at that um, overlook. I'll see, matter of fact, if I don't lose this, I'm going to see if I can find you a picture if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. Way, yeah. I forgot what it was called, but I'm gonna pull it up. Oh, the the Grand Canyon Skywalk. Um, I'm gonna show you a picture of it. We all know I'm afraid of heights, but I think I could do this. This would be fine. Um, even some of the walkways that we went out on at the Grand Canyon where we were, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm glad that there's guardrails up here. Um, but let me see if I can find. A picture for you. It says you hang, it's 70 feet over the edge. It's 4,000 feet up in the air uh, and it will hold 70 fully loaded 747 jets. So that's kind of crazy, but it, it makes me feel better about the weight you standing on it. Let's see if I can just find a picture. Oh, they've got a zip line. See, and this is what I was saying. You'll see it in my, my last video that I posted and the video that's coming out this week. The Grand Canyon is something that you could go out and see in a day for a few hours and like, hey, look, I saw the Grand Canyon and now we're done. But I really recommend, oh, that's a good picture. I really recommend going and staying a few days at the least. I mean, we stayed a couple of nights, but I really could go out there and stay a lot longer. Yeah, this is pretty. Okay, let me pull this over for you. <laughs> it's just really neat. I think it's cool. Let's see, share my screen. Next time I, as I get more comfortable with the live streams, I'll go ahead and have this stuff uh, pulled up for you. Can you see this? Uh, no, not that one. I'm going to get it, guys. Bear with me. I'm going to get it. Share screen. Uh, there it is. Okay. Hopefully you can see this. Um, that's your skywalk. So again, this is on the west side of the south rim. Um, I believe, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that this is also part of the Navajo Nation. Uh, they own this uh, and they collect the money for it, which we're going to talk about that here in a little bit because there are two other uh, areas that we went to on this trip that are also inside the Navajo Nation. Um, and so you're, you're, you pay them. Uh, it's not part of the National Park Service. It's not government owned, anything like that. But this is this walkway and I, I would love to do it. I think it would be really cool to take pictures out of and you just, you get this cool overhang anywhere you stand in the Grand Canyon. I'm telling you, if you've never been there, I, you're going to hear this so many times in this video. I mean, to the point that it kind of made me <laughs> nauseated. I was like, Stacey, stop saying that. But it's so true. It doesn't matter how many times you've seen the Grand Canyon in a movie or how many times you've seen the Grand Canyon uh, in your textbooks when you grew up or in a painting or a picture. I didn't think I was going to be impressed by the Grand Canyon as much as I was when we went out there. It trying to trying to imagine yourself while you're looking out at this big canyon that just keeps going. Um, and it's, you're so high up and it's so deep, the, the valley, you can see the Colorado River, but it really humbles you and makes you feel like such a tiny person in the world. And I think it would be great, um, it, one, if you're just, you like to learn or you're, you want to nerd out on a vacation, but I think it's really great to help put some perspective back in your life if that's something that you need um, to just sit there and eat a sandwich looking over this big, massive canyon and realizing how teeny tiny you are in the world. Um, it, it was just so beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to give you some tips when you visit the Grand Canyon on how to get away from the crowds, because holy moly, if you go to like the main uh, areas where, you know, like Mather Point, 
you're you're just elbowing people left and right. Everybody's got their camera. I was one of them. Uh, but I'm going to give you some tips on kind of how to get out and not necessarily be alone, because I think to be absolutely alone, you would need to be there at a certain time of day or you need to like walk down into the canyon on a trail. But I'm going to tell you where to go to kind of feel like you're a little bit more isolated without being totally alone, uh, you know, getting to sit and, like I said, eat your lunch and um, really take in the Grand Canyon and feel like you, you've you taken a part of it home with yourself. So I'm getting off on a tangent, so sorry about that. Hi, Tiffany. I see you. Tiffany says, great point. We tried to visit the North Room in late April one year and had to take a flying tour to get to see anything. Yeah, I yeah. How was that, Tiffany? A flying tour? I'm guessing it was a helicopter tour because I kept seeing uh, promotions for that. You know, I don't know if we are brave enough to get up in the helicopter. Maybe one day we'll see. Um, but yeah, I bet that was I bet that was a really cool to tour, though, Tiffany. Um, that is definitely a vantage point that is unique, kind of like going up in a hot air balloon. It's it's very unique that not everybody gets to do or see. So uh, tell me how that was, because I think that it might be a little bit thrilling and scary for me, but I think at the end, it, Jeff and I would be like really proud that we did it. Um, but yeah, so I, I always want to try to give what tips and information that I've learned along the way. Uh, if you have tips visiting the Grand Canyon or any of these places I'm going to talk about as we move up through Utah, uh, let me know because I, I want these live streams to be a conversation. Uh, a lot of times when I make these videos, it's just me talking to you. Um, and I really like to talk if you can't tell. Uh, so I really want us to create this travel community where we're all sharing our tips with each other and we're learning from each other. Um, you know, like Tiffany said, maybe I didn't know about the North Rim being closed. And now Tiffany has put this very uh, helpful piece of information in there for everybody to learn from. So keep the comments coming. I'm really excited y'all are here. Um, yeah. Oh, one other thing about making it a day trip from Las Vegas, uh, actually making it a side trip. I'm calling it more of a side trip and not a day trip. And the reason for that is, like I said, it's about 250 miles ish. And it obviously depends on which room you're going to go to but let's just say an average of two and a half, uh, sorry, 250 miles from Las Vegas to get to the Grand Canyon. This is going to take you a few hours to drive just to get there. And then you, I would imagine, want to have more than 30 minutes to an hour to see the Grand Canyon. Um, and then you still have that drive back home or back to your hotel or back to Las Vegas. So for me, just my opinion, if you don't want to feel rushed and feel like you've been on the road all day and you're exhausted, I would make it a side trip and not a day trip um, and, and just plan to stay one night out there somewhere. That way you can get up in the morning from Las Vegas. You can drive out to the Grand Canyon. You can have the day to really take it all in, relax, don't feel rushed. Um, maybe go on a trail, hike a trail, a short one while you're there and feel like you've stepped into the Grand Canyon, stay the night and then drive back to Las Vegas the next day. And if you get up in the morning, you could probably be back to Las Vegas by lunchtime and still have a half day or the rest of the day to, to hang out in Las Vegas. So, and, and let's be on, I mean, the last time I went to Las Vegas, which I'm about to go at, Oh, I'm about to go next week into Las Vegas for a conference. Um, so if you have any questions about Las Vegas, put them in the comments below. If there's any tips that you're wanting for, for travel to Las Vegas, uh, let me know that as well, because I do intend to make at least one video while I'm there, maybe two if I can squeeze it out. But uh, kind of like when I just went to Memphis, a lot of my time is going to be spent in these conferences. So it doesn't leave me with a lot of time to just get out. Um, but I do know that a lot of Las Vegas comes a lot comes to life at nighttime. So like I said, I, I think that if you got back to Las Vegas with any time to spend um, the rest of the day or the evening when Las Vegas really comes to life, I think you're going to be just fine. Uh, okay. I think that ends the rest of that. Perfect. Oh, Tiffany says it was a four seater, pl four seater plane, Tiffany. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, she said it was beautiful, but a lot of turbulence, I can imagine. Uh, it was amazing seeing the textures from the air. But yes, um, yes. And, and that's something, uh, and I'm sure another photographer or videographer that's well more trained than I 
uh, can probably give you better video footage. Uh, I tried to edit this, this video that just came out of mine and the video that's coming out uh, this week because it's got a little bit more footage in there. I tried to edit it in a way that I felt made the colors pop the same way it did in my eyes um, because the textures and the depth it is kind of a hard thing to capture if you're just um, using like your phone or if you're using a camera. But like me, I'm a nurse. I'm not a videographer. I'm not a photographer. Um, I'm trying to learn. But like like Tiffany said, it's there are textures and there's depth for the Grand Canyon that I'm never going to be able to convey to you here. And you just got to go see it. I cannot believe that you were on a four seater plane. Oh, my gosh. Um, when we went to the Maldives, Tiffany, I don't know if you watched those videos. That was the first time that Jeff or I had ever been on a seaplane, uh, which in my opinion is like the size of a pack of gum. <laughs> it's tiny, but it had more than four people on it. I bet it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe like 12 to 15 people tops, um, probably including your crew. And of course, it takes off and lands on the water, which was just throwing that in there was another wild card for me. But to me, that was scary being in that tiny little plane where tur any amount of turbulence, I think, could just blow you around versus being on a big like 747. I think it would take a, a lot more turbulence to really knock that plane around in the air. I don't know. I'm not a not a pilot, <laughs> not a flight attendant. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, that would scare me. I think I'd rather opt for the helicopter now that I think about it. <laughs> But wow, that's cool. Um, so yeah, definitely try to get out to the Grand Canyon. Check it off your list. I promise you, if it wasn't on your list before, it needs to be on your list now because it blew me away. Um, let's talk about park passes real quick because this kind of goes into the national parks as a whole. Um, as you know, I think I've talked about it in my videos ad nauseum about the annual park pass. It's called the America the Beautiful Pass. When this film, uh, sorry, when this live stream is done, I'm going to put a link down in the description so that you can click on it if you're thinking about getting a, a pass. The park pass is 80 bucks a year. Um, it includes everybody in your car. So if you're a family of four, you don't have to pay for each person to get in. Um, everybody in your car is going to get in, which the park pass to get into these national parks is the same way. You're just going to pay each time you go. So like for us this year, we knew we were going to Carlsbad Caverns. That's a national park. We knew we were going to Guadalupe Peak. That's a national park. We knew we were going to White Sands National Park. We knew we were going to be doing this trip where we're hitting up Grand Canyon. We're hitting up Arches National Park in Utah. I think that's all think that's all. But still, that's five national parks that we've gotten into for $80 for the both of us. And let's say we had kids or family we wanted to bring with us, whoever, they don't need to have another pass. Our car is getting in. So it's very helpful for taking these family trips or, or for Jeff and I, just, most of the time it's just he and I. Um, each time getting into the park is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 20 something to 30 something dollars. Getting into the Grand Canyon is $35 per car. I think it's a different price, obviously, if you've got a big van or RV, people are bringing their RVs in, there's places to camp. Um, so if you think about that, you really only need to hit up maybe two and a half to three parks, and that annual park pass is paid for itself. In my opinion, how much it costs to just go out and do activities these days, if I wanted to go to the zoo, you're usually paying 20 bucks a person to get in. So for a family of four to go to the zoo, just on average, I know it's different for everybody, but that's 80 bucks just to go to the zoo for one day for a family of four. So you think about this America, the beautiful pass, it's $80 for the year for your car. That's cheap. I think that's real cheap. And I think, especially if you are a family on a budget, really consider hitting up these national parks or even your state parks. We have found some national parks we didn't even know existed, like Guadalupe Peak. That's a whole nother live stream for a whole nother day because that was an adventure. Y'all, that was an adventure. I can't even talk about it. But anyways, park passes. Otherwise, like I said, $35 a day. You need to keep your receipt that they give you when you buy. Like if you didn't get an annual pass, you just paid at the kind of toll booth. Um, you need to keep that receipt because that receipt gets you into the park for seven days. Uh, and I believe it was the same way when we went to Arches. That receipt gets you in. It's a seven day pass. But if you throw the receipt away, they have no way of looking you up. Doesn't matter if you paid with your card or not. 
you have to pay again the next day when you come in. So keep that receipt. I did not know that until probably midday when we were at the Grand Canyon. So I'm glad I like read the fine print on the ticket. Um, same thing with the annual pass. You will have learned in this last video. I forgot to pack our annual pass. They have no way of looking it up for you. You have to pay again. I'm not too salty about it. We had already hit up three national parks. We've already gotten our money's worth for it. And any more money that I give, this is just my opinion. You may feel differently. Any additional money that I give helps to conserve the national parks. I'm, I'm not mad about it. Um, but it is something to think about, especially if you're on a very tight budget. Don't forget the annual pass. And I like that they give you for $35 or whatever the fee is, whatever national park you're going to go to, it gets you in for a week. Keep that receipt. Each time you come back, you, like after you buy your ticket, your receipt, you'll go into another lane. It's a quicker lane the next day because you've already paid. You don't have to do anything else. You just show them that receipt. They scan the barcode at the bottom and you keep going. Um, and that gets you in and out. Something now that I'm thinking about it, um, because we're going to talk about us going from the Grand Canyon on into Utah. If you're staying around Tucson or the Grand Canyon, like for us, we stayed out in Tucson, which is like a mile outside the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's right there, but technically it's outside the park. For us to venture off into um, trying to get up into Utah, trying to get to Horseshoe Bend, Monument Valley, and Page, Arizona, you have to go take the road back through the Grand Canyon National Park. So plan that into your trip. Because let's say that we we went to the national park every day for that seven day pass. Um, now our receipt is expired, but it's the day that we're leaving. But we got to get back up through the national park to get on Desert View Drive to go to Page, Arizona. We needed that ticket. We needed that day on that receipt so that we didn't have to pay again just to drive the drive. We're not going to the national park, but we do have to take the road that goes through the national park to get there. There is a way around that. But it involves you going back down south past Tucson. I mean, you're I, I added it up one day. You're adding at least probably two more hours just trying to go not through the national park and go back down. Um, so keep that in mind. Work that into your plans. If you're planning this road trip like we're doing and you need to move on to like Page, Arizona, because it's going to be a lot quicker for you to use that same pass and go through Desert View Drive. Um, which you'll see in this tips video that's coming up. I've, I've got some maps in there for you, um, but it's a lot quicker to just scoot through the National Park. And Desert View Drive is very pu beautiful. Highly recommend. Um, it's about a 20 mile drive down the edge of the South Rim going east. And there's a watchtower out there. It's very old. It's very beautiful. Um, you're not fighting crowds. Uh, that's another thing I want to talk about. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of like bouncing around. Talked about park passes. Let's talk about crowds and hiking trails. If you want to hike around the Grand Canyon, when you buy your ticket, your park pass for the day, they're going to give you a very big map. It unfolds. Take a look at that map. If there's not something in particular that you've already got your mindset on doing, like the Bright Angel Trail, it's very popular. Uh, a lot of people go in and they're like, hey, I want to do the Bright Angel Trail. Um, look it up on your map. You can see where the trailhead is. It's in the village. You can go park over there, probably in parking lot D where we parked. And and you, you're right there at the trailhead. I knew we were not going to hike that because it was just, it's a heights factor for me. Um, so we didn't do that. We ended up hiking the rim trail, which just stays, doesn't go down into the canyon. It stays along the top rim of the south rim. Um, a good portion of it is paved on that one. There's a good portion of it that's not paved. There is also a section on the western side of the, the rim uh, trail that is wheelchair accessible, mobility friendly. You can ride your bikes. So consider that. And I'm I'm putting that um, in this video as well that's coming out this week. I believe I already put it in last week's video. Um, but I'd just like to reiterate that because there's a lot of people who do need mobility friendly options. You want to see the Grand Canyon. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think that you're going to be able to walk down into the Grand Canyon most all of those trails are not paved. It's just dirt and rocks. Um, they're quite narrow and they're steep. Um, but the rim trail, I think, would be really a good option for you. There's a greenway part of it. So uh, when you are planning out your trip, 
think about that on that western side as you get out towards Hermit's Rest. There is a mile long section of the Greenway Trail, a portion of it you can ride bikes on. And hey, you can take your dog on a leash along the Rim Trail. Uh, that's one of the trails that they can go on. They cannot go down into the Grand Canyon on those trails. They have to stay up top. But it's a, it's really nice because if you're like us, I maybe want to take my dog. Um, maybe I, I couldn't find anybody to keep him. They also have a kennel there. Uh, they have a kennel at Carlsbad Caverns, I believe, as well. Um, so, so definitely look into that. If maybe you're in an RV, you're doing a, a big road trip around America. Uh, and obviously you're, you're going to take your dogs with you. If you want to go hike down into the canyon, they do have a kennel. Uh, you do need to bring obviously vaccination cards and stuff like that for your animals so that they can, uh, you know, make sure that they're fine. But anyways, um, so that's my big thing with trails, especially if you're trying to beat the crowds with the Grand Canyon. I would say, you know, the village... Um, right there where Brett, Brett Angel Trailhead is, where the hotels are, uh, where you get food and drinks. Those are going to be the most populated. Uh, same thing out by the visitor center. Very crowded. That's on the east side of this south entrance. Um, very crowded out there. Mather Point, stupid crowded. Tons of people. Beautiful uh, overlook. And you need to go take a peek. But like I said, if you're if you're wanting to take that part of the Grand Canyon and really kind of have it to yourself, venture out from the center part of the Grand Canyon area. Um, if you want to walk it, you can. If you want to take the shuttle bus, it'll take you out there. We took the red line all the way out to Hermit's Rest. That is a great part. If you get off at Hermit's Rest, walk behind Hermit's Rest. You got to. It's not very far. Like, I don't, I'm not great. Maybe a hundred yards. <laughs> it's not very far. I'm not great with uh, numbers. There are picnic tables back there. Not a lot of people. And you can just sit and have your lunch and kind of have the Grand Canyon a little bit to yourself. Um, same thing if you do some of the trails a little bit further away from the visitor center. You're going to have those trails most of the time very much by yourself. The very popular trails like Bright Angel, it was a steady stream of people the entire time that I saw it. It was like ants going down and coming back up. So, you know, pick a trail that maybe isn't too strenuous for you. I mean, you want to stick with your abilities and not bite off more than you can chew like I did with Guadalupe Peak. Um, you can talk to the park rangers there. They are more than happy to help you pick a trail that's the best for your abilities uh, and also best for the time of day, because now that we're getting into summertime, I know that they said for today, it's May 15th, 2022. They've got a heat index of 107. Uh, when we were there just what mid April, so a month ago, we woke up and it was snowing. It was snowing, um, partly cloudy. Then it was sunny and it was like in the thirties, very windy. So the seasons can change very quickly and you need to plan for that. Same thing, food and drinks. Um, if you if you look on the map and find like the village, that's where you're going to find food and drinks. Hotels are over there as well. Um, I know that they have uh, another section that has a very small general store out by like Yavapai Lodge, which is not very far. I mean, none of these places are very far from each other. Um, let me see. Matter of fact, I might be able to pull up. Let me pull up a tiny map. Let's see. Just so I can kind of show you. And I, again, I, when I do this video this week, I am going to pull this up for you. Uh, it might not let me. I don't think it's going to let me. Uh, let's see. There we go. Can I X this off? Okay. Let me see if I can put you in here. Okay. So to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, this area right over here is the place where we went. This is the Grand Canyon South Rim entrance. If I move west, going towards Las Vegas, uh, if I can get over there. This is all the Grand Canyon, all of this in here. This is all Grand Canyon. This obviously is Las Vegas. This is what I was talking about with this main interstate 15 is 
it was the direction that I saw mentioned most on seeing the Grand Canyon, but it does take you to the North Rim. Um, I would recommend coming down here to this South entrance, probably off what is this Interstate 11 or Highway 93. It's going to take you to the um, south entrance there. But if we go back over here on the east side where we went in around Tucson, I'm going to zoom in one more time. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. You drive up from uh, Tucson. Tucson is right down here. This is where you enter the park and you drive up into this main road and it's going to take you to out here. This is near the visitor center. This is Mather Point. This is a very, very uh, crowded, popular place to see because it's right next to the visitor center. And it's probably where most people go because they're trying to like, they're on a day trip and they're trying to like see the Grand Canyon real fast. Hey, here, I'm saw it. I'm done. Um, there's some trails out there as well that you can take. And then if you go around that, uh, and come down here on this entrance road, keep taking it. You'll get back here into the Grand Canyon Village. And this is where we parked. We parked out here in parking lot D. It's ne next to Maskwick Lodge where you can stay. They've got lodging there. They've also got a, a cafeteria type setting for food. Uh, Bright Angel Trailhead is out here as well. The Hoppy House is another um, historic place that you need to see. And then they've got some hotels out here. Um, back down in this area is where you've got Mather Campground. You can camp here. You do have to have passes. So um, when you're planning your trip, just contact the National Park Service. I believe you can log in online and book all of this there. Book your RV spot if you want to bring your RV instead of camping. Um, but like I said, they've also got lots of lodging options down here. Um, Grand Canyon Village Market in Delhi. So that's in that area. And then you've got a lot of RV parking here in this spot. And um, out here, like I said, by Mather Point is your visitor's center. Um, I do want to mention a couple things. Inside the park and outside of the park, they do have shuttles. So if you stayed in Tucson, but you want to take the shuttle in and out, um, there are certain times of the day that the shuttle will pick you up at certain places in Tucson. I'm putting that in my video that's coming out this week. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe so you'll know when that video hits um, because there's, I'm giving you a lot of fine details in that video that's coming out. Um, but they do have hours. And then inside the park, there are different bus stops that you can take the shuttle that'll take you to different points around the inside of the park um, to help you kind of get around. Again, if, if you can't do all the walking, I understand. We took the shuttle a lot the day that we were there, but we still walked about seven miles. So keep that in mind. Um, there's a lot of walking to do here. Now, something I wanted to point out as we kind of move along in my little agenda that I made for myself, and I can tell I am talking too much. Um, this is what I was talking about this road. Um, if you can see where I'm pointing, this is Desert View Drive. If I wanted to go to Page, Arizona, like we did, I need to probably take this Desert View Drive to make it shorter on my journey and cut out about two hours of having to go around the other cities. Um, so what you would do is, is Tucson's down here in the south. You would come up here into the park and then you would take a ride on 64 for Desert View Drive. There is a very pretty watchtower out this way, about 20 miles. You are still in the park at this point. All of this is the national park. So keep I keep saying keep that in mind, but really you got to be mindful. There are lots of overlooks on this Desert View Drive. So again, if you're trying to beat the crowds, go out on these overlooks. There's usually we didn't see any of them that were very crowded. If anything, we might have been the only people there. And you can enjoy the Grand Canyon for yourself. Desert View Watchtower, which is right here. Um they used to let you go up into the watchtower. When I went, they it was closed. You could go down in the bottom portion, which is still really cool because it's open. There's a big fireplace. Of course, there's a gift shop. Um, but it's just neat to see. And you're going to see in this video I've got coming up this week, you're kind of just out there. Yes, there are other people, but there are ways and there are picnic benches along the rim where you can just sit out there and, and feel like a squirrel on a tree in the Grand Canyon and have it all to yourself. Um, so definitely consider if you've got more than if you've got a full day, I think you could squeeze this in. If you have more than a day, you definitely could do this. 
I think if you're only coming into the Grand Canyon for a few hours, this is probably not going to be as feasible for you. Like, let's say you took the train because there is a train you can get there from Williams, Arizona. Uh, ride the train a few hours up. It'll drop you off right there in the National Park. You'll have about three hours to enjoy your time. And then you have to get back on the train and go back to Williams. Um, I'm also putting the fine details on that in my video that I'm editing right now that will post on Friday. So, yeah, something to consider. I think next time we go, I definitely want to try the train. I love trains. So let me take this off. I love trains. Oh, let's see. Um, oh, Michelle says fab info there. Thank you, Michelle. I'm trying to tell you what I know. I don't know. Um, okay, so the rest of our road trip, I'm going to spend the next like 20 minutes kind of telling you what else we did. Um, so from the Grand Canyon, we knew we we had about a week total to work with for our vacation time, which is kind of the average, I think time off that someone's going to be able to take. You're probably going to take five days off of work plus the weekend, seven days. So we flew into Flagstaff. Like I said, we stayed a, a night that night. At, we went to the Grand Canyon the next day. We stayed that night. And then the next day we uh, were going to Page. So we went out Desert View Drive, saw the watchtower along the way because it's the same route. And then we went up into Page, Arizona, which took us a couple of hours as well. Um, we got to Horseshoe Bend in Page, Arizona at sunset. I'm sure if you have any kind of social media, you have heard of Horseshoe Bend. You've probably seen it. Um, I've got pictures that I'm going to be posting in the next week or so. I would recommend if you're wanting to go to Horseshoe Bend for picture time, probably go for sunrise, not sunset. I have a tea and a drink. I'm one of those people that's got to have options. Lots of drinks everywhere. Let me know. Did you bring your coffee? Do you drink tea? I'm drinking an Earl Grey with a smoky Lapsang Souchong tea because it. I used to be able to get a smoky Earl Grey that I loved and now I can't get it. So mm. sorry about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, definitely go to Horseshoe Bend for sunrise, not sunset, because if you're looking at Horseshoe Bend, the sunset sets behind Horseshoe Bend, and so the sun's staring you in the face, which is what happened with us. I don't think we got probably the best pictures. Maybe we could have gotten better ones if we had gone at sunrise, but it just didn't work out in our plans. Sunset was still beautiful. It was awesome. Um, you were out there with a ton of people. And just like the Grand Canyon, this is another spot. I think it's very mobility friendly. There's a paved path all the way down to, to the Horseshoe a bend area. There's a place where you can sit. It's small, but there is a place where you can sit that's still paved. And then um, there's a lot of like rocky area and unstable ground around that paved portion that you could still walk on. But yeah, Horseshoe Bend, very mobility friendly. There is a fee to get in there. I can't remember exactly how much it was. I'll have to look that up and put it in this video that's coming out. But uh, I want to say it was like 20 bucks or something roundabout. You park in the parking lot and then there's like a mile walk down to Horseshoe Bend itself. There is a, an area where there's a little bit of guardrail, but kind of like the Grand Canyon, like I said, you need to watch your kids, watch your step. Um, I see a lot of people, especially at Horseshoe Bend, trying to get right on the ledge and hang over to take these awesome pictures. But the problem with that is, is people have died there from trying to do the same thing and falling. And I think that's my big fear. Um, so any pictures you see, I mean, I'm near the edge, but I've got plenty of feet behind me. It was very windy that day, and I didn't want to Augusta wind to come up and get me and, and take me on. <laughs> so um, that's the thing about Horseshoe Bend. And in Page as well is a place called Antelope Canyon. Oh, my gosh. I cannot tell you how cool this place was. Antelope Canyon, you're going down into a canyon. It's not... Uh, I'd say that the walls are probably 30 feet high, maybe 50. I don't know. Interject here. I'm not, again, not good with math, not good with numbers. Um, but you go down into these canyons that are formed by flash floods, wind, and sand. And it just, it's sandstone that has been carved. And it looks like, it just looks like this, like this red rock that looks like a river has flown through it. You get to walk down into it. This is one of the places that is owned by the Navajo Nation. Uh, Monument Valley is another one 
two, and both of these you need to probably, I would book your tickets in advance. Um, I'm going to leave a link down in the description for the tours that we took. I think it was called the Tadain um, Canyon Tour. We went to Canyon X. There's an upper canyon and a lower canyon, and then we went to Canyon X. We went on a photography tour. It was a little bit more money, but you got a lot more time, and you were able to bring in bags and cameras, whereas on a regular tour, you cannot. And on a regular tour, I think you got like an hour tops, and you're there with a ton of people on your, on your tour group. With us, it was like just us and another couple, and that was wonderful. So it was worth us paying a little bit more money for that ticket. Um, but yeah, definitely, I'll see if I can pull up a picture of Antelope Canyon because it was so pretty. Let me find it. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up right now. I would pull up my stuff, but I I have it all on my hard drive because I'm trying to edit this video. Um, I do not have any video for you for Antelope Canyon, unfortunately, because they did not allow uh, video, but they did allow you to take as many pictures as you wanted. And the person that took us on our tour was so great at kind of showing us different angles um, and different settings on our cameras to get the best picture. Let me put this in here. Here we go. Can I make this bigger? Can I make you bigger? No. I was hoping I could make this bigger. Um, but anyway, yeah, Antelope Canyon, I, it, it's definitely worth the drive to see Horseshoe Bend and see Antelope Canyon while you're there in Page. I think you could get both of those done with staying a day, like do one one day, stay the night, get the other one done, and then you can move on. It does not have to be a long trip. Uh, and then Page, Arizona has a lot of other options as far as, yeah, I don't, I can't pull these pictures up the way I want to, but one day I'm going to figure this out. I'll have my pictures ready and then and then I'll be able to show you. I'm sorry. That's what happens on the first live stream you've ever done. But just trust me, Antelope Canyon, you're going to see it. Um, I'm going to put links down in the description below after this video posts for my Instagram. Of course, you can follow me here on YouTube because uh, I uh, the pictures are just stupid. And a lot of them I took with the phone. I took with the phone. It's going to blow your mind. And I'll tell you when I post them on Instagram, which ones I took with my with the iPhone. And they're ridiculous. But anyways, you go down this canyon, you do go on a tour. You cannot go down there just all willy-nilly by yourself because it is on the Navajo land. They still live out there. This is their land. Be very respectful. Um, and then, of course, the money goes to the Navajo Nation. It's not a national park. So you won't be able to use your park passes for Hershey Bend or um, Antelope Canyon or Monument, Monument Valley, which I'll kind of talk about now. Monument Valley was something that we did on our drive up to Moab. Um, so once we left Page, we drove further up into Utah. Uh, I'd say we drove for a couple of hours and we hit Monument Valley. Uh, there again, that's another entrance fee of, I think, like 20 or 30 bucks, something like that. And you can take your car, which I this was kind of a unique setting. If you've ever seen Monument Valley, like I said, uh, the Western scenes that they filmed for like Back to the Future, I think it was three, um, that's in there. They've some Mission Impossible stuff, I think was there. I don't remember the exact movies in these franchises because there's so many, but um, it's it's the it's the scene that you've got where it's just like red desert and then you've got these huge columns that just come out of the the ground. Uh, they look like monuments, which is why they call it Monument Valley. Most Westerns, if you're a Western fan, I know my mom's on here. She loves a good Western. This is one of John Wayne's like favorite places to just go. And they've got a hotel out there. Just go and stay. But they also filmed tons of Westerns, including probably any John Wayne movie you've ever seen was filmed at Monument Valley. Uh, but you get in your car and you drive your car along the drive. It's a big loop. It goes out and it comes back in. Um, it took us, we were taking our time. We were taking pictures, of course. It took us an hour, hour and a half, maybe two, if you're really taking your time. There are scenic points where you can get out of your car and take it in, take pictures, whatever you want to do. Um, but I think it would be a good part, a good something to add on to this trip because it doesn't take you very long. And it's already on your drive if you're going from like Page, Arizona to Moab, Utah. It's on the way. You might as well stop and, and see it because it's so pretty. Um, so then from there, we went on up into 
Moab. This is when we kind of got back up into the mountains because we wanted to hit up Arches National Park um, and we wanted to rent a side by side and go down some trails. So that's what we did. I highly recommend just going to Moab. The city of Motab is Moab. Moab. The city of Moab is so cute. It's very quaint. It has that small town vibe, um, just like one main street with lots of little shops, cute places to eat. We uh, went to eat at this place called Dobird. I'm not a big donut fan. I'm not a big sweets fan, but Je Jeff loves donuts. So we found this place called Dobird. We were going to go one day and we were going to get some donuts. We we're going to call it good. And we ended up going back every morning because the donuts were so magical. I don't know what they're putting in those donuts. They also make an exquisite lavender latte. Uh, Jeff got a cold brew, but highly recommend Dobert if you're there. Um, they've got another place, I think, called the Garage Garage Cafe um, that's got some good food, great coffee. Uh, but otherwise, it's a lot of like little local shops, a lot of made in Utah shops to support local communities, support the town, local artists. Um, so check out the, take a day, like a half day if you're in Moab and just walk around downtown. It's so pretty. You've got the, um, like a marriage of these big red rocks, desert vibes. And then off in the distance, not very far away, you can see this big snow-capped mountain. It's just gorgeous. Um, but from there, we went to Arches National Park. Again, we incurred, because I forgot my pass, another $35 entrance fee, but it's good for a week and it's good for your whole car. And you make this kind of daunting drive up into a mountain over a pass and you're in Arches National Park. Um, you will have seen, again, Arches National Park, especially the Delicate Arch specifically. Um, a lot of social media, Instagram pictures, people getting pictures there. Um, so there's lots to see. We spent an entire day in Arches National Park. And just like the Grand Canyon, I think you could spend several days there. I think you could do even a week in the Grand Canyon. And I probably would only do maybe three days for arches. It's not as massive, but there's lots to see. There are lots of trails that um, that you can, you can see the arches if you have mobility issues. But I didn't really find more than maybe one or two very small trails that would be wheelchair accessible. But... You can still see the arches from afar. You just can't get down into them because it's it's uh, rocky terrain, but it's easy to walk. Not a lot of heights. I, I didn't have any problems there. We did not do the long walk to Delicate Arch. Um, it was very windy that day, 50, I think 50 mile an hour winds. So we didn't do that because I knew that there was like a 200 yard or 200 foot section where you were kind of like, on the side of this cliff, walking, trying to get to Delicate Arch. And again, just, just being up on any narrow trail when the wind's that bad. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to tell you to do it. You do what's best for you. I'm just not going to promote it. Um, we know I'm, I'm afraid of heights. But I think, I think even on a non-windy day, I think you'd be fine if you're not afraid of heights. But Anyways, you get the point. Um, I think, yeah. Okay. Um, otherwise, the next day what we did was we went to uh, rent a side-by-side -side with the Moab side-by-side -side tours. They were wonderful. Uh, they were very helpful. They gave us a lot of handy information as far as renting side-by-side -side where we should go because we're not used to the terrain. Um, and... It was helpful for us because we're from we're from Texas. We've been riding four wheelers and side by side since we were kids. But the terrain is different. Um, you know, for us here, we're usually going down some some like dirt roads or in some mud holes or something. Um, but up there, you are driving on these narrow. I mean, they're cliffs. It's it's a cliff. We got some beautiful drone footage, by the way. I cannot wait to show that to you. I can't wait to edit it. I'm so excited. Um, here in a few weeks when that side-by-side -side tour video comes out, I mean, I'm telling you, hit that subscribe button. We finally got some drone footage because this area is not part of national parks. You can't fly your drone in the national parks without a lot of like permits that are expensive, red tape, whatever. Um, 
But when you take the side by side out, these are just some of it's private land, but most of it's kind of private slash public land. But but anyways, you can take the drone out there. We got some awesome drone footage. It's going to be so pretty. Um, but we we went out chicken corners. It's supposed to be like the easiest. It's a green trail. Um, there were a couple of parts that I ducked down because I was on the passenger side where the cliff was. And it was just very daunting. And I didn't want to quit the way I quit with Guadalupe Peak. So, and Jeff is like an, he's an experienced driver and I trust him completely and he's not afraid of heights. So I just ducked down. <laughs> You'll see me in that video. I'm talking to you on the camera down, like tucked in where I couldn't see what we were doing until we had gotten over the pass. Um, and then of course, coming back, it was so much easier. One, because we'd already gone over it, but two, because then Jeff was on the outside and he got to be next to the cliff looking at it. And I didn't, um, but we had so much fun out there. It, it did take the entire day. It did take the entire day. We rented our side by side at 9 a.m. And we took up every ounce of daylight that we had. We got back. We had to return it by five, which was kind of good. I think they do that on purpose so that you you're probably not going to get there right at five. And they want you to have enough like leeway time to, you don't want to be driving out there in the dark if you don't if you're not experienced and you don't know what you're doing there are areas out on these trails that you can take you can camp um you can take your rv there's a place i don't know how these people got this rv down there because it was a narrow lane for us to get the side by side but they did it um but you can take your rv down there and camp i would love to do that even if we were just tent camping. I would love to go down there and camp out and, and wake up to this beautiful Utah scenery. It was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, we took it out all day. There are some really cool things to see out there. Um, there's some, I think, petroglyphs. Um, there are some other places where you can see like old native lands. They've got it kind of carved out so people can't walk on it. But it's just kind of neat to see these, what did I say, pictographs? the drawings and carvings in the rocks that are probably been there for hundreds of years um, from the natives that used to live on this land. So that's really kind of cool to see again, if you want to have some fun running the side by side, but also kind of nerd out. How much time do we have? Oh, it's 11. Okay. I need to kind of wrap up. Let me see if anybody has any questions in the chat. Michelle says that was uh, in relation, oh, fab info there in relation to the disabled info, always handy to know, accessible and easy routes. Yes. And I'll tell you, Michelle, anytime I go anywhere, I really, I think about you. Um, I think my nursing experience plays a part in that, but especially since we've come to be friends, I've been even more mindful. Like if, if I brought Michelle here, like if we went on a trip, <laughs> would she be able to come here and walk around? You know, is there an accessible trail that we can go on at the Grand Canyon? What about Arches National Park? Like how do people um, who do need a little bit of mobility help with trails, how do they get around and see these beautiful places? And so I'm happy to report back. I know at least the Grand Canyon has got a wonderful area to go. Um, Arches National Park is a little bit more iffy. I think it's They've got a little bit more trails for people that can walk out there. There are some that aren't, it's not a long walk. So if you've got your energy up for the day, just to make a short walk, maybe a few hundred yards, there are some like the, the what's it called? The double arch. Uh, that's not a long walk from the parking lot. So I think you could still do that. But if you have any issues walking on uh, rocky terrain or moving a wheelchair on rocky terrain. Some of these places are not going to be as feasible, which I don't like, but they're, we're getting, we're moving in the right direction. Um, I really like that Greenway trail at, um, Grand Canyon. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Gary says, I didn't know that about the John Wayne movies. Yes. Uh, I'm, I promise you like, and they've even got a section out there dedicated to John Wayne because it's an overlook because they say, that it was his favorite place to just sit and it's right next to the hotel. Um, and really, so if you want to live your life like John Wayne for a day, you can go and stay in their hotel there at the visitor center at Monument Valley and wake up, drink your coffee, looking out over Monument Valley like John Wayne did. So something to consider. Oh, hey, Amy, this blonde life. I met Amy with this blonde life 
at the uh, travel conference in uh, Memphis. So, hey there, girl. Uh, she says, hey, girl, I'm heading to lunch, but wanted to pop in and say hi really quick. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I love answering your questions, and I, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, like I said, I do have a, another video coming out this Friday that's going to be a little bit more in-depth with a lot of fine details for getting to the Grand Canyon, um, tickets, driving, renting cars, routes you should take. Uh, same thing with like Monument Valley and Page, Arizona. And if you want to rent a side-by-side, -side, that was so much fun. I would highly recommend it. We had a blast that day. Um, but my videos coming up in the future, these next few weeks, are going to be all about this road trip with fine details. If you have questions about any of the things that we've talked about or you want more info, especially if you want them to be included in my upcoming videos, because I haven't edited them yet, I could put these questions in there and answer them for you. Leave it down in the comments below and I will be sure to get back with you. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and that like button if you really like this live stream. Thank you so much for being here. I was nervous, but this was fun. I think we had a great time. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next live stream and video. Safe and beautiful travels. Bye. And I'm done. Yay.